So we're here in Puebla, Mexico, which is the birthplace of mole, and it's continued to be very popular. And the couch surfing family that we're staying with actually has offered to show us how to make it from scratch. So right now we're here at the largest mercado in Latin America, apparently, uh, to pick up some of the ingredients for mole. Cinnamon canela. So each of these buildings, I don't, we probably didn't film all of them on the way in, but they all have a very special type of product that they're going to sell. So this is probably, from what we've seen, maybe a tenth of it. Just this one giant massive building, which is the size of a Costco. And so imagine that by at least times ten. You need to look at a satellite map to actually see how big it is. But uh, yeah, it's massive. So, uh, this, this is one of the ingredients for mole, and it's basically one kilo of the macho platanos, or the man, man's banana. So we got all our ingredients from the Mercado this morning, and our host family from Couchsurfing is going to show us how to make it um, from scratch. So let's see how it's done. I mean, a lot of these ingredients are dried. So, like you have to rehydrate, um, we haven't done anything with the chilies yet, but you have to rehydrate the uh, raisins and you soak the almonds in the hot water also. The raisins apparently don't have to be hot water. So you need them big enough to fry, I guess, to cook, and then we're going to blend everything together. So you don't want it too small where it's going to basically disintegrate on its own. Its own side. So I asked her what makes the mole uh, black like it's a black sauce and uh, if it was the chocolate or if it's the chilies and she says it's mainly from the chilies. Much easier than peeling garlic. This, this wants to come off. So the, the chicken, it's basically just a, a boiled chicken but um, it looks like it has, uh, it's boiled with onion, cilantro and of all things mint. And it's just a tiny, tiny little bunch of mint, uh, about this much in a decent sized pot, like we'll show you. Um, but uh, it's interesting. Yeah, and a little, and a little cinnamon, uh, cinnamon bark. Yeah. So we, we're using manteca, manteca? and aceite. Uh, aceite. So it's basically lard and oil. Okay, caliente. So when the basically the lard melts and it's totally clear. And as you can see it, it, you can't distinguish between the oil and the lard. Uh, Se volvió una sola pieza. Huh. Frying. Uh, this is definitely some kind of uh, plantain. Also, the plantains are ready. When they turn the color of someone that's been spending a lot of time in Acapulco and their skin changes to a nice bronze, they're ready. Don't add salt or anything to any of this yet because you're going to adjust that all at the end. So we need to cook the onions until they're just soft, but not brown, because we're not we don't want to caramelize onions for this kind of dish. Uh, it's not the flavor we're going for. So you want you want, you want day old bread basically. Yeah. See, it's kind of uh, stale actually. So man, no wonder this tastes so good. So, well, like lots of lots of it is fried. So yeah, you, again, you don't want this to be brown, just uh, just frying a little bit, get some flavor in there. So yeah, get, get all the water off the, uh, the almonds and the peanuts, um, so you don't get splashed with oil. Un poco café. Un poco café, pero no brown. Sí. Okay. So we're, we'll, we're going to sí. be cooking stuff, and Vamos then we'll keep adding it to that pot, basically. Okay. These, these are like a bis biscuit or cookie. Um, I don't know what you would use for this in the U.S., but I'll tell you what it tastes like and tell you the nearest thing that would work in the U.S. Uh, okay. you know, I was hoping to place it, but, um, it's definitely very flowery, um, but I can't think of anything in the U.S. that tastes like that. Maybe a very, very plain, uh, cracker. Like not, not, not a saltine. Yeah, without no salt. It's not salty at all. 
Tenemos la canela. Canela, cacahuate. Ok, mira lo que va a pasar ahorita. Ah. Cambia un poco de color y se infla un poquito. Ok. Está bien. Wow. Ya cambió de color. No ah, lo sí. dejo más. It's, it's got a little bit of blistering to it now. Oh, yeah, okay. it's más, más rojo. Más rojo. Ok. You don't want to do this overheat, basically. It's already hot from all the frying we've done. And now we're just going to add the sesame seeds. Soak up the last of the oil. So basically we're going to eat all of the oil that we're putting into this. We're putting it all in one giant pot. Todo. Chicken broth. Okay. Mezclamos todo para que se haga un poco suave. ¿Qué? Okay. Rehydrated raisins. So, the way she described it, this is all taking a bath for about five minutes while we'll clean up the rest of everything. But, um, I think almost everything is in it except for the chocolate and the final uh, salt that you may adjust at the end. I'm guessing when this is gonna cook, uh, all that water is gonna kind of thicken it anyway. Grandes van a quedar en la coladera. Porque está poco espeso. Lo vamos a dejar que se caliente y que tiene fuego. Ya nada más dejarlo que se caliente. Don't want to boil it. Once it starts bubbling, um, putting it on basically a medium heat. Uh, now we're going to add the sugar and chocolate and salt adjustment. So I was asking, like, when is it going to be ready once we add those final ingredients? And it'll be ready immediately, but apparently it's the type of thing that gets better with age. So you can eat it immediately, you can let it cook some more. Uh, it's even better the next day uh, or the day after. So um, something to keep in mind if you're making it. Le vamos a poner el chocolate, por favor. I've been waiting for this the whole time. Sí. Sin papel. Okay. Sin paper. <laughs> Dentro. Okay, sí. Okay. So it'll just disintegrate in there too. You don't need to chop it up or anything. It'll melt. Yeah. She said it's disintegrate. Desaparece en un ratito. Sí. El color permanece. Vamos a verlo. No, it's already melting. En México, si cocinas, sí. cocinar. Sí. ¿Sí? Sí. Alegre. Sí. Sí. Divertido. Sí. Sí. Es básicamente que algunas cosas se quedan en el fondo del pot. Si no lo estás en el fondo, puedes sentir que se empieza a crecer un poco en ahí. Así que... Sigue creciendo a este punto. Vamos a poner un poquito de sal. Yo le llamo una cuna, como las del bebé. Sí. Una cuna. Pollo. 
Pollo. Este, este caldito se lo ponemos ahí sin esto. Ah, sí. Dejamos un rato. Sí. Sí, so we started at five. So it's been cooking like three and a half hours, I guess. An hour. But it's not as difficult as I thought it would be. It's, uh, there's a lot of steps and a lot of ingredients, but none of them are, no, no any one step is very difficult. Um, very doable if you're motivated enough. We'll finish them off with some sesame seeds. Which, So I'm going to try my very first homemade mole uh, in Puebla, originated, uh, invented by nuns. And they basically gave, my, gave me my own bowl of mole. And I'm about to, uh, I, I got more rice, um, this is for the third time, but it's mainly just to eat more mole.